Hi, Internet. The new FAQ is out. Some great stuff in here that will power through today. We picked out only the changes and updates from these probably eight bajillion PDF documents for all of you. Let's get to it. All right. Hi. Hey, everyone. I'm Emmanuel. I'm Alex. And uh, that's for all the uh, new listeners that haven't had to suffer us <laughs> before. Uh, new update. I'm excited about this. Kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it, uh, it and it wasn't a light one either. Um, mm -hmm. When I woke up and saw, ooh, new facts, I was like, oh, yay, I can digest this fast. No, no, I could not. Yeah, I miss magenta. I miss magenta for the new ones, <laughs> honestly. Um, and that, that kind of is part of what inspired us to do this. We wanted to pick out only the changes so um, and, and go over those and kind of give a little br brief commentary of what we think they these are these mean and what they can be used for. So uh, let's, uh, let's stop uh, being around the bush, yeah? Yeah. Let's beat straight into that bush. <laughs> let's Full beat steam ahead. Bush. <laughs> All right, so you want to read the first one? Yeah, sure. So this one, does a cover line have... So people were concerned about how cover lines interact with three-dimensional terrain. And does a cover line have an unlimited height above and below the line drawn between the two bases, as you can see in the picture? And the answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, this was, I think, more obvious for people who actually have less experience in wargaming. Because there are there are war games specifically Big Hammer that say specifically with the obscuring keyword that is something with the footprint it extends an infinite box of mm -hmm. opaqueness up, and mm -hmm. it trips a lot of people up, especially if you're bouncing between the games. But it just clarifies that no, in Kill Team, it is in fact true three dimensional point to point. To, is that line interrupted or not? Yeah, and honestly, this doesn't come up that often. Um, it's uh... It's usually things are at kind of two levels, I find, unless you're mm -hmm. mixing terrain sets. Um, if you're using all the Nackmand, all the Octarius, they're pretty much at the same mm -hmm. level. Um, so it doesn't really come up that often, but um, what what is interesting about it is when it kind of dips under overhangs and the cover lines, so it can get a little funky. So this, this is helpful. Um, <laughs> more on this in a little bit, but uh, they changed specifically how something works for commandos but probably future proofing but also with um actually no it wouldn't it wouldn't relate to corsairs huh because they just get a free dash action this mm -hmm. basically as an operative performs a dash action during a climb or drop to reach its intended destination can it also perform other actions that provide a free dash so daca boy um with um with the DACA dash, they can dash and shoot or shoot and dash. You can't use that to um, to provide um, extra movement in a in a climb or um, yeah mid climb or mid fall rather. You can't initiate any action that contains a dash within it halfway up a wall. Correct. Is how it works. Exactly. Yeah. I I kind of disagree with this, but hey, here's yeah, it <laughs> it's, it's, it it's it's in print now, so we gotta gotta deal yeah. with it. Okay, so our drop zone is considered to be unlimited in height. So, for example, if you're on a vantage point and you have to be within a certain distance of the edge of the kill zone, can you be on that vantage point and be just do the horizontal measurement? And the answer is yes, um, which is great and I think very sensible. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it doesn't apply to the center of the kill zone. So if you have to measure the center of the kill zone, you better be on the floor or else you're hurting yourself. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, I... interesting choice, but it's clarified and that's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think they're like center of the kill zone for things like central control and stuff. They're kind of treating it like an objective point, an mm -hmm. objective marker, because it's a physical point. Mm -hmm. But the whole line and perimeter thing, they're kind of treating... I, I, I like this change. This this makes yeah, things no, I think, I think it's I think it's good. Uh, some terrain features... Oh, this one. Yeah. Some terrain features such as pipes would realistically provide cover for an operative, but they're slightly elevated, so cover lines can be drawn under them. What do you do? They still provide cover, and the answer is yes. Um, but agree with it um, with your uh, partner. There's one of the uh, one of the players out of the Brooklyn scene on one of the discords <laughs> made a very good comment. The further you read into the answer, it's like, come on, guys, just play. Well, <laughs> Be reasonable. So I yes, that's very much the undertone here, and mm -hmm. I think that is going to keep popping up in this set of FAQs. Like very 
a lot of a lot of the answers are very much like the common sense way. Perhaps you could rules lawyer your way around it, but they've mm-hmm. all been closed up with just common sense. This is the way it should be. Yeah, <laughs> this is the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I agree. For the vast majority of them, it's just kind of the rules as intended, kind of filtering through, which is nice um, to get a rules as written interpretation for rules as intended. Uh, but one one parallel that I drew to this, and I brought it up, and uh, it seems that most people agreed with. Oops most people agreed with it is that th- this is not my diagram. This was drawn in the Killzone discord um, for the Killzone podcast. Check it out if you haven't. And the, the question was since, so the, the target is up here and the shooters down here. And if the targets up here, nothing below them provides any benefit. So you could technically draw a cover line from below the light cover on top of this vantage point and your cover line would avoid the vantage point. So if they were concealed up here, you can actually shoot them mm-hmm. if you're close enough. And just intuitively, this kind of breaks the abstraction of the game. But I think you can reasonably... Oh, looks like it got cut off a little bit in the stream here, so, in the video recording. Sorry about that. But um, this is just the same text as the previous page right here. Um, the I, I think it's reasonable to agree with your opponent, just like it says down here, that for the intent of what this is supposed to provide, this light cover, say it extends down far enough to cover cover lines down here. I think that's okay, right? It's it's perfectly reasonable. And it, it, again, it's just, it's common sense. Like there's, I understand the rules as written argument about it and drawing mm-hmm. that line. Oh, it's it's valid. It's, Honestly, it's very valid. The rules is it written. Is, it, just, it is valid, <laughs> but it's it just makes sense like to play it this way we are we are abstracting a war game here Mm -hmm. you're not no you don't have 12 to 24 operatives running around a battlefield by one of them hustling and then standing still for five minutes while every other person (laughs) takes it in turns to move and then shoot at people who are in freeze frame like it's 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 a dynamic we're trying to statically model something dynamic like yeah except that these sorts of things have to work the, the yeah. squid games uh <laughs> red light green light right <laughs> yeah. um core rules errata nothing yeah simple enough yeah, okay. they, didn't, they didn't find more mistakes that's good um mm-hmm. or they didn't they didn't comment on any mistakes that are in there um yeah. did i so, read the last one i think i did I think, go I for it. it yeah um so uh we're now into the compendium and so mm-hmm. we're talking about um tau so when a drone operative is protecting a friendly operative as real savior protocols um, there was a question on something when a drone intervenes to protect against a blast weapon, whether the drone or the original target is now the origin of the blast. And in a very common sense way, it is the original target. Yeah. Great. Again, the, yeah, again, the common sense thing, huh? Yeah, like mm-hmm. you, you're supposed to think of the drone swooping in to protect. So the blast still happens where the blast was intended, but it's just sit. Yeah. I, I got you, Mr. And honestly, President. <laughs> It's probably it's probably better because now that operative is no longer being hit by the blast weapon. Yeah, yeah, fair. Um, cool. Um, speaking of savior protocols, uh, this was real yeah. funny. Um, so I'll read this real quick, but I'll explain it. It's a little easier. We have the uh, original text here at the bottom. Um, change the relevant part of the second sentence to read. So uh, when they do this, it's really hard to interpret because they're like, well, what does the rest of the paragraph say? So basically the second sentence is down here, just basically saying, if you select someone to protect, you protect, if it does so, until the end of the turning point, each time a shooting attack, yada, yada, yada. So the way the original rule was, (laughs) is that you could choose to protect and then you could just walk away from your drone and that drone still protecting you from the other side. Um, clearly not intended, so they say, mm. or no longer within circle. So reasonable. Yeah. Again, common sense fix. <laughs> Although I kind of like it. I kind of like that rubber banding effect no, of the drone. No, <laughs> from like no, 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 no. No. Fine. I think it's funny. Uh, commandos. Nothing. Nothing official <laughs> except for except that. for that. <laughs> Leave my boys alone. Carry this on. Third, <laughs> this is the third change in a row. Uh, they're, they're, anyway, I'll, I'll leave my commentary to my, my green boys over here. Um, go for it. All right. So now into vet guard, um, and some, again, common sense fixes about the confidant. Um, 
And when you're using his directive ability, can I select a ready friendly operative, but then instead use a tactical asset because there's rules about when you would use a tactical asset, you do it when you would use a friendly operative, but we're specifying no. No, you cannot. Yep. And in line with that, um, competent veteran, the change here just means it's the blue here, other, um, meaning that you can't do stuff to yourself. Turns yourself. out that if you were arguing that a confident veteran could activate himself infinitely, you weren't correct. <laughs> uh, okay, so now the demolition veteran um, with his detonate ability. Uh, again, common sense. When the mine goes off, it hits everything within three inches of it. There's no silliness about can you shoot into target? Can you hit friendly operatives? Can you hit only non-friendly operatives, which are actually friendly operatives because blast is silly? No, none of that. It's a bomb. It goes off and everything within three inches suffers. Hooray! Yeah, I, I think it might have been like Haywire Mine or some, some, some sort of other AoE, I can't remember exactly, that specifically got the rule or maybe it was Blast, I can't remember. But mm-hmm. one of those, one of those other AOE effects hit other operatives, but because of the wording of the, the detonate ability, it didn't fall into right. that. So yeah. they're just kind of cleaning up, saying, "No, we meant detonate too." Yeah. Hey, Hunter Clay got nothing. We truly they got left alone. Not like my stealth nerf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so for the warp coven, uh, schemes a chain tactical ploy. What happens if you reveal a new tack op? And pass off. I forgot to put the original text here for reference, but schemes of change ploy lets you mm-hmm. um, shuffle your remaining tactical um, tac ops and then draw a new one. Say you got blocked out of one or you wanted to flip it around, but if it's a second turning point and you reveal one that has to be revealed in the first turning point, for example, your host. Well, this time you just keep discarding and yeah. determine a different one. So mm-hmm. that's a nice change. All right, so for the warp portal psychic power, can I select the operative performing the action to warp portal itself? And the answer is yes, um, which, and give, great, yeah. yeah. And they give you a cheeky way just to, here's how you keep the bookkeeping. Um, yeah. I, I always have extra models with me. I would just probably um, swap mm-hmm. it for another model and then just kind of shimmy shimmy spaces something like and that. frankly and frankly this is just good practice anyway to mark mm-hmm. where your model is before you move it if you're not a hundred percent sure whether you're going to get the target you want or some other aspect of that nature correct i agree uh capricious plan um just for reference this is the one that lets you get a free dash and change your order they clarify that the sorcerer if you perform dash already you don't get to do another dash, but you can still change the order. So they, they, you're not tied to the dash to change the order. That's a good change as well. Yep. Um, still Warp Coven. A lot of Warp Coven in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, the Occult Talisman. Each time this operative would lose a wound as the result of a mortal wound or a shooting attack from a psychic power, roll 1d6, and on a 5-up, that wound is not lost. This uh, is like a, a hidden pictures I spy thing. Can you find the change? Yeah. I genuinely can't. I don't know what it, it is. It took me forever. It's this blue comma. After wound? Mortal <laughs> wound or a shooting attack for myself. Yeah. Basically, it says um, oh, mortal so, wound. Yes, I understand. Or a so psychic now, attack. So yes. it's... Yeah. Any any damage from... A mortal a, wound. Well, no. Any mortal wounds and mm-hmm. any damage from a psychic attack. Correct. Yeah. It's yeah. just the comma. Yeah, there was a yep. lot of debate about that comma, actually. So it's a very important comma. Grammar! Yep. Um, so for the purpose of generating faith points, <laughs> when does an operative have a special specialism? Narrative play only. Uh, I think it was Warhammer World that said, yep. yeah, sure, give them specialisms. Oh my goodness, they were swimming in faith points. Oh it's kind of kind of kind of funny to have an insight into how the heads of the Hydra don't talk to each other. <laughs> All right, next one's yours, bud. All right, if an enemy operative makes a... Oh, sorry, we're into novitiates now. Mm-hmm. If an enemy operative makes a shooting attack with an indirect weapon and you use the blinding or act of faith, which takes precedence? And the answer is indirect. Awesome. Yeah. Blind aura really just says, hey, you have cover if they're outside of two inches. But indirect yep. says, I don't care about your cover. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, that's... I think that's a... It's a good fact, but a sensible interaction. Mm-hmm. You get cover, but indirect doesn't care yeah this one um this actually definitely did need an faq because there's no 
there's no three dimensionality to barrage or to blinding aura is right. blinding aura like a sphere around the novitiate is it just cover much right. like a barricade would be so basically same question but from barrage and barrage has difference if you see in yeah. the um in the appendix it only matters what's directly above you blinding aura does not care about what's directly above you because mm-hmm. these are <laughs> someone shot some mortars yeah. <laughs> it's gonna hit you whether you're shiny or not <laughs> This one's on you. This is it me? Oh. Yeah, you. Oh, I thought I did the last one. I'll do this one too. So, uh, Defenders of the Faith strategic ploy. This pl- uh, ploy down here, basically, for every novitiate within circle of uh, objective, so essentially on an objective for most maps, um, can do shoot and or, or can do shoot and fight if they have an engage order. So, it's not activating them early. They get a free action before anything happens at the top of the turning point so if you set it up this is really really strong but was really 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 strong if you could fight kill your opponent and then shoot this faq says no do one of the following they don't have to be the same so not everyone has to shoot not everyone has to fight but each model can only do one either shoot or fight yeah cool um so burning wrath um a very reasonable change that I think brings it into line with some other things. The Infernal rule is changed from a special rule to a critical hit rule. It's yeah. the way it's supposed to be. Great. Yeah, it, and when you read the Inferno X text over here, mm-hmm. um, it specifically says if you retain any crit. So technically, it always worked, even if it was a special rule. Because right. you have the special rule that only procs on crits. But this is just um, housekeeping. <laughs> mm-hmm. what, what's the word of the word of the day? Common sense. It's common changes. sense, yes. <laughs> um, novitiate Penitent. Uh, they added a lot of text. This is what Absolution Through Destruction, which um, is a great Guns N' Roses <laughs> album. <laughs> Almost. Close. Um, appetite for Destruction? Appetite? Yes. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, Absolution Through Destruction. Fight action with this operative. Perform another fight action. They basically solve the problem by adding more words. It's kind of the theme mm-hmm. for this edition. Um, basically, they're giving, instead of a fight action, you get a free fight action. So that's important. So I'm not sure why that's not in blue, but perform a free fight action with this operative. After completing that action's fight sequence, if you're still with an engagement of an enemy operative, you can fight in combat with this operative again. For the second combat, you do not have to select the same target. And Zealous Rage, which is the rerolls, has no effect. And Zealous Rage says the first time that you fight in combat, the fight action for et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that, that was already, like, that's a little redundant, the Zealous Rage thing, but it's nice that it's in there. Um, this is different now because before you could, with an extra APL fight, charge, fight, um, now you can't get that extra fight right? unless you're stuck in combat. So you could fight again with the same person if you didn't kill them or fight someone else if you charge into two, mm-hmm. but um, you don't get that same versatility like if you got whipped with the whip lady. I think she's the one that gets the extra appeal. Yeah. The free, the f- adding the free in there is just bringing it in line with other sort of container actions. Mm-hmm. I think so too. Uh, uh, now we're on to Pathfinders, Drones. Um, blast same thing, works right? the same way. Yep, yeah. exact same. Yeah, and I think this Carry is on. the same way as well, right? We'll yep, skip. exact same yeah. as other yeah. drone stuff. Hooray, and that, that was And fast. that's it for the changes, right? So now these are brand new entries. So we'll go through all of the items. Um, all the other ones were FAQs that got updated. So everything in the following ones are brand new FAQs for us. Um, I'll, I'll take this one, I guess. I don't okay. remember who it was. Um when using the hiding tactical ploy, if I activate a hiding operative, and that's their their basically deep strike, and then set them back mm-hmm. into the um, set them into the um, the kill zone outside a certain uh, certain distance, and it would happen during the turning point. Um, so you put them down, set them up with an order, subtract action points for normal move action, then can I immediately change its order with cult ambush. Um, to change to engage so that way they get rerolls. So um, I didn't put the text in here because there's a lot of text. Basically, 
cult ambush, they can all flip their order in the first turning point, and if they flip their order, they can re-roll all matching dice. So if you roll a bunch of ones, you can re-roll all the ones. A bunch of twos, you can re-roll all the tool twos kind of thing. So they're saying that if you're deploying from hiding, you can't flippy flop the order. Yes, kind of, because that's their ambush that that it is. Yeah. If you think about it in a common sense way, they started their app action or they started their activation off the board, which is when they would have had to choose what their order is, but you can't flip it because they're off the board. They walk onto the board with their normal move and then keep going. So they don't get to flip. Just because they arrive on the board doesn't mean that's actually the start of their turn. Yeah. Um, This takes a little bit of the bite off of their alpha strike. Um, I don't know if they needed a nerf, but I think this is just, this isn't so much a nerf, but how they were intended. That's that's what I understand this to be. Mm -hmm. I concur. Um, oh boy, locust stuff. Um, so the question is, can the locust use his quicksilver strike action, which is the one where he smacks someone who comes close to him, if the enemy operative, or if an enemy operative with fly moves within three inches of him? And the answer is no. If someone's using fly, they move around other operatives as if those operatives weren't there. And so, therefore, if the locust isn't there to begin with, it can't be within three inches of something. Uh, it's a little backwards in how you have to think about it, but it does kind of make sense. If he's flying, he's not reachable if you're a ground-based locust. Yeah. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that we don't really understand fly. Um, but I think the way that it's written is how we're actually supposed to understand fly. Because I'm guilty of this as well. I abstract it to like, oh, you can go infinite high in the air. And then you choose your vertical mm-hmm. distance at which you pass. Mm-hmm. But that's really not it. Like it, In this FAQ, we're seeing that people that use fly to kind of clip through other enemies that are blocking doors to go through them to the other side... That seems like it's okay with this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and because they're explicitly saying you ignore the operatives if you have fly. It's not that you're ignoring them because you're going high mm-hmm. over them. You just straight up ignore them. That, yeah, that's what I can, take from this, at least. Yeah, it, yeah. fly is both infinite vertical movement, if you so choose, or just ghosting through mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Both of them work. Hooray! Hey, um, Boy, Boy Dancer, Dancers. this is all you. You know these <laughs> oh, boys. I've played so many games with these. They're so fun. So this one and the next entry, I'll do both of these just because they tie into each other. Um, they tie into the performance down here for both the epic allegory and the melodrama allegory. Both of these rely on taking someone out of combat with inflicting damage, inflicting damage um, with either two or less or two or more shooting attacks, uh, shooting attacks or melee attacks. Um, if you ignore the damage from the dice, and that's what Justice Scratch reads, you don't get you don't count that dice as inflicting damage. So if you kill a boy, but they ignored one of the three hits um, with a shooting attack, I guess, then it, it, I read this, and then I'm thinking, well, if you incapacitated them. Why did they just a scratch anyway? But I guess you could just a scratch if you were going to get incapacitated anyway, just to. Yeah, I I don't I don't understand how this would work out. Well, basically. no, if I mean if for whatever reason I mean you do this with implant all the time, potentially. Just a scratch so you can score implant and do some damage and things, but mm-hmm. yeah. So if that's that's fair, but yeah. I mean with with melee it's two or less attacks. So, I guess this actually works in opposite, now that I'm thinking about it, because... Actually, we can, we can go into that more in another video. <laughs> well, I think the one I, thing I think... I'll say is that two or less attacks in melee, if you just scratch one of three attacks, this actually protects the um, Void Dancer troop. It's not a nerf to them. Because if I just yeah. scratch the first attack, but then you kill me with the other two because I want to get some damage in and get an implant... Um, mm-hmm. you still would score epic because that one that I just a scratch didn't count, right. so you still did two or less. Interesting. So yeah. I, I, I was thinking about it from the, a nerf side, but it's actually, I think, more of a benefit side. Mm-hmm. And then the other side of the coin is what if you have feel no paints where you just ignore stuff like dis, uh, discussing re- resilient? It seems that they interpret that feel no paints happen once the damage has been inflicted, but you just don't sustain the damage. So those do count. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, more Void Dancer. Can you use the Chegarak... Chegarak... Who knows? <laughs> can you use Clown God's just strategic <laughs> ploy against an enemy operative strike that was done as if it were in combat or similar, such as the unending, tact- unending bloodshed tactical ploy from Legionaries? No, you can't. Um, the intention here is that you're using this if people are doing some sort of honorable combat. Um, if someone's just taking a, a drive-by swipe at you, you don't get to do anything. Yeah, speaking of which, this would also um, this would also protect the Shade Runner from a drive-by swipe because a, yeah. the Shade Runner special ability um, strikes as if you were in combat. I think this also kind of indirectly answers some questions about basically any any ability that comes up in the future of you know you get to roll a single attack die as if you were in melee Mm -hmm. none of the i don't think this indirectly answers that none of those are both models fighting it's just that one model making a single attack Mm, yeah that's interesting yeah and and yeah yeah i think you can probably apply this to a lot of other situations that's a good point yeah i hadn't thought about that um this is a good change i like this Uh, between colors lets you shoot mid move um, this is a strategic ploy. Um, doesn't work with a Shrieker Cannon. That was, that was very sad to see mm-hmm. that. Um, long story short, um, you can't just be hovering in mid-space. You have to be in a location where you are you can legally be placed in order to make that shoot and then continue the rest of your move. You got this one? Can you handle this one? I uh, know. I'm so confused. What? <laughs> a Shadow Seer is a Psyker? Moving I'm on. baffled. <laughs> Speaking of moving on, Legionary didn't have any FAQ. Um, I think we're almost done. Legionary and Void Scarred. Oh, this is a long video. Um, Legionary didn't have an FAQ, but they had some Arata. <laughs> Likewise, this one's going to be a yeah. tough one for me. They had to add Legionary Warrior there. Moving on. Ooh, this is a spicy uh, one. Take it away. Yeah, so Perpetual Aggression. Um, so it's added the following text. It can do so even if it's performed a normal move or charge action during the activation and vice versa but doing so does not prevent it from subsequently performing a normal move or charge action during that activation in the normal manner. So this is just, it's not 100% saying common sense because this was a little confusing enough as Mm -hmm. it is, but it is bringing it now into perfect common sense saying, hey, this is how it works. These are the situations in which you can activate it. It was a little confusing before whether... Uh, these moves blocked you out of those other moves because Mm -hmm. this isn't really a defined type of move so was it a normal move hard to say um but now it's explicitly stating that yes you can do all the things you can normally move and this is special that lets you move further yeah yeah and interestingly enough um you could do another normal move um or a charge even so um yeah it just opens up a lot of possibilities for especially models that can fight twice like the anointed that's 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 one that pops into my mind Mm. Um, i'm a little curious that just in at the at the base text of this that it says that uses a normal move in this wording and not charge mm -hmm. it's a decision someone made yeah yeah um this of course means that you have to take corn and i think nurgle's a better mark but at least zine that's fine i think nurgle anyway moving on that's just my bias again um speaking of zinch um they fixed it yeah um i think there's another one like this later that probably will fall on to me to say but uh basically this um this tech uh tech ploy just working the way that we think it should um, it fixes it it works yeah. like a it works like the boss knob now yep Great. like the commander boss knob exactly um, and now we have, yet again, Legionary, the Soul Chosen, or Soul Feast. Um, so each time the operative fights in combat, at the end of the resolve, successful hits of that combat, if this operative has not been incapacitated and any of their strikes inflicted critical damage, the operative regains two lost wounds. Great. Wonderful. So instead of just being able to do a crit mid-battle and get your two wounds, mm-hmm. you have to survive and, well, yeah, you have to survive and have done the crit. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I think you nailed it right there. It's about the timing of when you get the wounds. You have to survive. Mm. You can't you can't use those two wounds to maybe eke out with a wound left or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this is the other one I was thinking about. Uh, they changed the wording for "In the Eyes of the God." Um, you actually don't get an APL anymore. Um, so the way that "In the Eyes of the God" used to work, you would have to try and trigger it out of phase. So either before you activated or after you've activated, and you really have no agency in doing that. You're just hoping someone just yeets into you, right? 
but now it works exactly as conceptually you would expect it to the you get a free mm. action so whatever the heck you want to do and um the first thing i did when i saw free action is i looked to see if they had any two apl um mission <laughs> actions because it's free action so that technically mm. can give you two apl they don't have access to any of those though so. um, unless, unless a book mission comes up in the future that has um a two apl mission action um they don't have access to anything like that interestingly this is now the inverse of what it was before mm-hmm. rules as written because before it was you could only activate it for any useful not on your turn and now you must do it on your turn correct incapacitating correct. off turn does nothing yeah this is better this is better yeah, just it is. because oh it's, it's way better it's less fiddly and mm-hmm. more new player friendly yep uh no designer commentary i think we only have one thing left <gasps> take it away bud Oh boy, Voice Guard. Uh, so, can the Voice Guard's Shade Runner operative move within engagement range of an enemy operative for the slicing attack action, even though it has the fly keyword and can move around across and over enemy operatives as if they were not there? And the answer is yes. Again, common sense. So, you move to a location, um, you place it within engagement range, then you turn off fly for a split second, and then you turn fly back on and keep going. Yep. Simple common enough. sense. Yeah. I, I mean, there's no reason that someone who has access to the flag keyword is going to be sitting there floating 60 feet above the battlefield being like, I want to stab you. Why won't you let me stab you? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think again, just like before, it just boils down to how we don't have a great understanding of fly because the, the text is really small and doesn't really allow mm-hmm. for a lot of clarity here, but the errata and the FAQ, this is technically not an errata, even though it's an errata document, because this is clearly a designer commentary, but it's under errata, so I'm putting it there. Uh, I digress. Um, it's nice to have these uh, entries to help us understand yeah. how they want us to play. I think between this one and the Locus's clarification, mm-hmm. we know a lot more about how oh, fly is intended for sure. to work. For sure. Yeah. I think those are the two biggest um, the two biggest arguments about how fly is supposed to work. And honestly, like these work the way um, I expected them to. But the way that they explained how they worked changed how I understand Fly, at least. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, that's it. Is that it? Hooray! Oh, no! There's one more! Oh, no. Ah, okay. I lied! Um, you have to use separate psychic powers. You can't do the same psychic power twice. That's it. Okay, cool. Reasonable. For these guys. Yeah. Um, I, that, I mean, that brings them in line with every other psychic mm-hmm. operative that has access to multiple powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just wasn't explicitly stated. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Good FAQ, I think. I think very uh, good I set have, of FAQs. I, I, I think uh, two things, just a TLDR, at least from me. Um, two things about it is that it answered a lot of questions that we've been seeing in the community. And it came pretty timely after the last one. Like, not too soon, but enough time for cl- questions to accumulate. Just enough for the anxiety of the community to get to the point of like, where's the next one? Where's the next one? How long and has it been? It. It's been two um, months. The other one was uh, shortly before, um, shortly before LVO. LVO, I think. Oh, I it's think been it dropped that before long? LVO. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so about three months. About three months. Okay, so yeah. they're so thus far they are being very, cur- very true to their word of quarterly balance updates. Or was it um, before SEO? It was before one of the tournaments we went to. At least. No, I, th- I think it. I think it was relatively soon before LVO. Either way, it's not a year and a half. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it. This is a good side to the kill team. I like it. Anyway, mm-hmm. That's all I got. What about you? Any closing, closing, uh, closing statements? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, we talked about how they answered a lot of questions about fly. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's good changes. It's good changes all around. And I also think that for those people who want to argue that at some points, th- this gives more ammunition to people who want to argue rules by intent, I think. Mm-hmm. Doing yeah. common sense interpretations that may not be exactly the letter of the law, but are very clear, like this is how it's supposed to work. And we can all agree to play on that. And I think that T.O., this gives T.O.'s particularly, like, power to be like, they've done this one set of common sense fixes, 
it's clearly going to be this whenever they patch the rules we're going to play this way yeah i it's i was i was waiting for you to finish before i jumped in there mm-hmm. um it was tos exactly i had yeah. the same exact thought because as players we have to do our best to play rules as written when we can even mm-hmm. if we disagree with rules as intended just or this disagree with i think it's probably supposed to be as intended just because we're, mm-hmm. we're powerless in making that decision right but it gives tos the ability to make a call on these edge cases because yeah. of the precedent that was set i 100 percent agree yep yeah it's yeah. a good thing everything here is great i love great it great success yay bye internet bye internet